I'm the reason why there was a big ADL tweet. Me, yes. I complained about her. Do something. I got her banned. Straight up, I don't care. I snitched. I don't care. Call me a snitch. I don't care. I got her banned. I don't care. I don't give a fuck. It's difficult to imagine that there was a time when the internet was actually free. And no matter how horrible the opinion, no matter how awful the take, you would find a forum where you could express it without getting banned. And this goes all the way up to 2016. And despite what you believe, the world wasn't worse. Like, there was no real-life consequence due to this. It's just that people had fun on the internet, and the internet was a more creative and fun place. I mean, j just think about, you know, the Nyan Cat video. That was a viral video that got millions of views. Wh what are those viral videos today? You know, where is the rage meme culture? Where, where is that? There's almost no creativity on the internet, and that is due to the fact that there is a censorship industrial complex in place. It happened after Trump won the election in 2016, and you have like all these NGOs and all these institutions, and now even government bodies like the European Union, that are doing their best to sanitize and regulate the internet, even on things that aren't illegal. In fact, the British government actually states that they have a task force to look for things that aren't illegal, but they're still harmful in order to take measures. So this is where the internet is moving towards, is to, to lock things down, to, to have the mainstream industrial censorship complex where millions of dollars of taxpayer money is spent in order to censor the taxpayers. And for a while, it was mainly directed at the right it was actually directed towards populist movement, but usually those happened to be on the right. And the left was supporting this. They were cheering this. They were like, well, you know, you can have free speech, but there's consequences. Well, the private platform can do whatever it wants, so it doesn't have to show your opinions. But recently, there is a little bit of a schism within the left. There is a little bit of civil war going on. And this is regarding the conflict in Palestine. You see, a lot of left-leaning people are indoctrinated into identity politics, into woke ideology. They view the world through the perspective of the cisgender straight white man versus everyone else. The cisgender straight white man is the oppressor. He creates capitalist systems which spawns a network of systems of oppression and they're keeping minorities down. So when they're analyzing the conflict in Israel, they look at Benjamin Netanyahu and they're like, well, he looks like a cisgender straight white man to me that creating the capitalist system of systemic oppressions. Uh, so basically, they, they choose to support Palestine. And then you have like the institutions, you have the corporations that uh, are supporting Israel. And they're both left-leaning. And they're not odds with each other. And the question is, who censors who now? Because up until now, it was easy to censor. Like, you had the appropriate thoughts. It's like, okay, you support BLM, you support vaccines, right? And you're good. But now there's many content creators that don't know what to support. Do you support the minorities from Palestine or do you support Israel? What do you do, right? Like, wh who do you ask for help? Because you need to have an opinion in order to be uh, popular on social media. You need to have strong takes. But they need to be the right take, right? So, uh, when it comes to Twitch... It's very interesting because Asmund Gold said something which Maloney Chad also said yesterday, but for some reason she didn't get banned from Twitch. Uh, he, he, he talked about the comparison between American culture and Palestinian culture regarding LGBT rights. And it turns out that he had a bad take, right? So he got a 14 days suspension. He got a two week suspension. And because of that, a lot of people were uh, a little bit upset. It's like, hold on, you know, okay, fine. You, you don't want to say these things on Twitch. But why are other people managing to say it? Because, like, for a while, this was always the case, right? Like, as I mentioned, the censorship industrial complex is directed to the right. So left-leaning people get to violate the TOS whenever they want. And they were like, well, Hassan Piker had a literal terrorist on stream, and that is against the TOS. Why isn't he getting banned? And the answer is because uh, it seems that Twitch is on the side of the leftist civil war that's pro-Palestine. And they gotta be, because a lot of their content creators are the same. So they would have to ban a lot of their major content creators. Uh, this is 2024, it's not 2020. Kick exists, and there's alternatives. So they realize that if they start upsetting people, they're going to lose uh, a lot of money. So they, they got to play it on a team. They, they got to pick a team. They can't be just a neutral platform because it has well been established that these social media are actually editorial bodies. They're not just uh, 
you know, search engines that allow you to find various people talking online. No, like there's now rules and regulations. So there's this lady in particular, which uh, apparently had some interesting takes <laughs> regarding soldiers and PTSD. And apparently this is a violation for Twitch, but when people were calling her out, she doubled down. And now it turns out that uh, Aiden Ross contacted the ADL. And once the ADL got involved, well, then Twitch is like, okay, okay, okay. I mean, now you got the big guys, you know? Now you got the adults in the room. Now, now there is strength, there is power. You know, up until now, you just had a couple of peasants on the internet, but the ADL is here now, so we gotta, we gotta comply. And I find this uh, entire culture fascinating because now she's apologizing. Again, you know, when the peasantry complains, nothing happens. But when it's about that bottom line, when it's about getting the, uh, the, the possibility of getting a bad, oh, uh, uh, then the apology kicks in. Um, I, I dislike apologies in general, by the way. Uh, and the main reason is that I can't tell if they're genuine or not. Because like when a, when a person apologizes to me, I, I can tell if they are genuinely sorry. And, and by the way, the purpose of an apology is to know that you're not going to do it again. Like, that is the problem. You know, it's to, to tell me, like, okay, you know what? I, I You're right. I done goofed. I apologize. Won't happen again. Right? And as long as it doesn't happen again, usually the person is, is forgiven. But that's not what an apology means in 2024. In 2024, it's like, please stop ruining my channel. Please, please stop ruining my business. That's what it means. It, it basically means that you had a take which upset enough people that had enough power in order to jeopardize your business, and the apology is like an admission of guilt. The problem is, like, if there was a culture that believed in redemption and mercy, maybe they would just back up. But, like, when people just want to destroy your livelihood, they don't give a fuck about it. They take it as an admission of guilt, and it's like, look, she's, she's guilty. Don't defend her. She admits that she's wrong. So now it's time for the prosecution. Uh, so I can't tell who's apologizing because they care about their business not being ruined versus who genuinely had time to reflect and they were like, okay, well, maybe I shouldn't have said that, or maybe I should have worded it differently, what happened again, right? Like, you, you can't tell. And this is why a lot of people also don't accept these apologies, especially when it's turned out that uh, she doubled down before. Uh, as, as you can see here, like, there, there's another part where she doubled down before people got upset. It's kind of difficult to be a content creator, to be honest, because on one hand, you want to be a cheeky little shit, because, like, being a cheeky little shit gives you views. Like, people want the edginess, but on the other hand, if you're a cheeky little shit and you upset the wrong crowd, then the ADL steps in. So, <clears throat> a lot of people are upset at Aiden Ross for summoning the ADL. It's like, how dare you? Why, why are you doing this? And I'm like, I'm sorry, but the ADL has existed on the internet for the last decade, and I haven't heard you guys complain when right-wingers were getting targeted. Like, all of this censorship industrial complex was with the blessing and encouragement of left-leaning people on the internet. And I know you're left-leaning because I see your profiles. I see your banners. I, I, I see your hammers and sickles. And I see your black flags and shit. So when it was right-wingers that were being persecuted, it was fine. Oh, now someone calls the ADL against uh, a leftist. Ah, oh, no, 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 well, we can't have that. It doesn't supposed to work that way. But, but it does. Like, if you create the ring of Sauron, you don't get to decide which finger it gets to be placed on. Personally, I would hope that we would live in a society where people would be able to express whatever the fuck they want online, no matter how vile. And as long as it's legal and they're not inciting for violence, then it should be okay. Like, for instance, Asmongold having his take on what he thinks about the culture in Palestine, I don't think that should be banned. It's his opinion. If you don't like it, I'll subscribe. And surely, right, you live in a decent society, so everyone is going to unsubscribe. I don't think that this lady having this particular opinion about soldiers... You know, it's disrespectful, it's disgusting, but I don't think she should be banned. Just like the West Barrow Baptist Church shouldn't be banned. I mean, they de facto weren't, right? And the society didn't collapse. I mean, you, you have like a couple of crazy people chanting their slogans and saying their shit. But at the end of the day, you know, that's that. Why, why, why is it now that a politician has more freedom and more power than a streamer? Shouldn't it be the other way around? Because like a politician actually can pass legislation and they can actually influence the world. They can de facto do more harm than a random chucklehead with a TV. No, seriously, like, Melody Chan said, uh, which is the Prime Minister of Italy, if you don't know, she said literally what Asmago said. D -d 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 Use different words, though. Use different context. But, like, the, the, the spirit was the same. 
So she gets to say it. Asmund Gold gets a two-week ban. And if this is the game that people want to play, yeah, it doesn't surprise me that now other people are going to do everything they can in order to get the ADL involved and to get whatever organizations they can because like they don't view Twitch as being a fair platform. It's like you have the rules, you're not allowed to do this and this and that, but like some people are allowed and some aren't. Well, yeah. I hope that this is going to get a lot of people ushered to the point where they start realizing that maybe you should stop doing this. Maybe, maybe you should stop trying to censor your political opposition. Because at the end of the day, if you keep doing that, you may get censored as well. So, like, how, how about no one gets censored? How about you just let people speak their mind? And then uh, individuals will choose what streamer to follow. That used to be the case before 2016, but apparently it's not good enough, huh? Have things gotten better since 2016 or worse? Seriously, let me know what you think. I'll see you guys in the comment section. Take care.